Hey guys, welcome back to Addicted to Fishing. I'm John. I'm your host today. Today we're going to talk more about the poison tail jig. Um, as most of you know or may not know, the mold is actually uh, for a swim jig, a weedle swim jig. Um, you can also make it um, just a regular swim jig without a weed guard. Just make a modification to your pen so you can push it up. Um, and then you can have a flat head. Um, but as some of you've seen, I'm making the little prop heads out of it. I will be making swim jigs out of it. Um, some of you may have seen I've made um, chatter baits out of it. Um, and then recently I made another modification. You may not be able to see it. I didn't really dig too deep into it didn't have to um i followed another technique that's out there yes i know you can use a dremel yes i know you probably get better results um but so far it hasn't caused me a single bit of problem um i've got uh a couple of them lined up here and i can show you the progress that's being made from start to finish without actually pouring them this this one of course needs some cleanup but yes, guys, we're making the poison tail spinnerbait. All I did for that mold was lay my R band in uh, with the hook, got it lined up where I needed it, used a little bit of uh, gorilla tape, taped it down in a place, laid it on the floor, the mold, on a piece of uh, wood, took a hammer to it, and hammered on it until it scored. Uh, once I got that scored, I laid that in. I thought I would try it to see how it works. And they're working flawlessly. Um, here's one that I have almost complete. You can see it's painted. Blades on, eyes on. Got to put a skirt on it. And this one is a little bit more of a finished product. I like that Oklahoma blade, the willow kicker. I haven't been able to get out and fish those yet, um, so I don't have exact information on how they're going to run. Um, I figured while I was out here working on this last one, I'd bring you along for it. Um, we're going to try to figure out what color we should go with on that skirt. I think I'm going to go with a shad. Actually, you know what? I'm not going to go shad. I got that other one painted shad or skirted up with shad. Let's go with a white shad anyway. You know, guys, I'm not hand tying these skirts right now. I'm using some hollow ones and or... Um, the ones with the band on it. I'm gonna kinda go with a bluegill kind of color. I think I wanna put that silver up. So with these hole of one skirts, you just simply Get the skirt lined up, push them up over the collar. So that's over collar one. Over collar two. Pull a different color combination. But again, guys, one of the nice things about these is uh, these hole in one skirts or the other skirts is you can change colors as often as needed. I use a little Sally Hansen's. I forgot to put that on there over top of the, the whole head. And there we go. Finished product. 
This was just a regular double willow leaf. I'm a big fan of the double willow. And I'm a fan of that willow collar, willow um, Oklahoma blade. Sorry guys, I'm just putting this over in the vise to let that dry. Give you a quick flip around here to what that looks like. You can see it in the vise. Not a bad looking spinner bait. Here's the other one. This one's got the, uh, I painted it black first and then came back with the June bug. I like that color. And I'm going to use that contrast. I have not modified any type of uh, trailer keeper for this. Um, but simply, um, a nice looking spinner bait. I don't have a lot of uh, color options right now on my blade choices. Um, so silver works really, really well for me. I like to get some gold blades. Um, I gotta do some more of that stuff later on. Um, something long-term future coming down. I did have, uh, a uh, new system for organizing a lot of my parts, a lot of tackle stuff. I got rid of the the boxes. Most of you see, I kept them in the boxes. The problem was I was having to juggle through all the boxes. Happened to look up on Home Depot. Home Depot had a uh, had a uh, nice organizer kit, so I went and picked that up. I had a I had a uh, store credit up at Home Depot for something else I'd bought. So I maximized my uh, usage of that. But anyway, anyway guys, that's a real quick video. Um, I'm going to get out on the water, give these guys a try. Um, but a spinnerbait, my number two favorite lure to fish right behind the chatterbait. Um, and like I said, I'm making prop heads. And these are all in a 3 8 ounce. Um, and that's probably my go-to size 95 percent of the time and here i can come back with the uh unfinished head kind of show you what's going on here you do get a little bit of flashing down around this collar but you're easily able to clean that up also up here where the uh the hook eye would be Um, and where the sprue comes out, you will get some flashing that comes up over top of this arm. Um, but other than that, I don't have a lot of problems with it. Um, it pours pretty solid. You know, of course, some of these I, I got to clean up. That's where that weed guard would be. You can see where I've clipped the sprue and clipped that off. I got to clean up some of the pieces. Um you know, it's, it's it's a work in progress. These are the first ones that I poured. Um, and we're just going to see what we can do and how they're going to work. Um, they look like they all are pretty much a complete pour. Some of these, sometimes with this poison tail mold, right down here on the, on the collar, it won't pour all the way through on the front or the back. Um, so if you guys are having problems with that mold, what I do is I take a little propane torch and I uh, stick it right in the hole, get that hook nice and hot, get, <clears throat> get the inside of that cavity really, really hot. And I also put the, uh, the mold right up on the spout, um, so that when I'm, uh, pouring that mold, um, yeah, I get a complete pour out of it. Getting it hot is probably the biggest thing that I've noticed that's helped me out with it. Uh, but anyway, guys, um, stay tuned. We've got some more videos coming out. I know I haven't been getting them out twice a week, every week. I'm trying my best to get them out at least once a week. Work has been uh, overwhelming for me and uh, keeping me uh, very busy. Um, and the weather's starting to cool off, um, which is a good thing because... Uh, we will have um, 
a lot more time to make videos out here when it's not 100 degrees in the garage. Um, it feels pretty good out here. I can sit in shorts and a t-shirt, make videos all night long, pour jigs, do all those kind of things. Um, I believe this guy is going to be fantastic, being able to get up into that bigger size. I did it with the uh, screw lock keeper. Uh, this one's not too great, but I wire th or thread it on a uh, keeper. I don't know how well you can see that keeper on there. Um, I did it real quick just to see if I'm going to like that keeper versus the screw lock, which one I like the best. But if you guys remember on the little smaller size, I didn't even use anything. I just used a piece of uh, uh, heat shrink tubing. I may go back through and make some odds on all of those uh, lures and uh, get a keeper in. Uh, but anyway, guys, that's just a real quick video on what I'm up to. Um, and I told you I was going to have a modification coming soon um, to make that uh, uh, fourth bait out of that poison tail. Um, so, guys, um, stay tuned for more updates, more stuff coming. Uh, I'm going to keep them rolling as best as I can. If you haven't hit that uh, subscribe button, please do. Hit that notification bell to be notified when I'm putting out a new video. Um, like, comment, share the videos. Do whatever you can to help me out. I'd appreciate it. I mean, as always, we'll keep fishing on a budget. <clears throat> Thank you.